Hey, bear. The way you can see both eyes so clearly. The way this animal is not skittish like a deer, it makes it not feel like it's a deer. I don't think that Taysen had ever really hiked on the East Coast. I don't think I've ever hiked like east of, you know, Colorado. <laughs> and uh, neither of us had actually been on the AT. So we were really excited to, to see what that was like just the whole process of the through hike, getting to meet hikers out there and see how they did things and just learn from them. The Appalachian Trail is a massive trail, and I would call it a network of trails essentially, um, that's gonna start in Georgia and go up to Maine, that people jump on and off all the way through it, or that there's a massive following of people who through hike the entire trail um, over 2,000 miles but it's also just one of the most historically rich, I would say, trails in the United States. We decided that it would be worth making a trip out to the East Coast to get an idea of what our East Coast hikers are doing. And uh, that just happened to align with the 100 mile challenge that we were starting to set up. Here at Outdoor Vitals, we're an, we're an ultralight gear company and we have a pretty good sized following and we were putting together a course for people to do a 100 mile challenge. So this is an opportunity for us to go do 100 miles and prove out the framework that we were writing at that time. So it was just like, okay, we're gonna go to trail days, we're gonna hike the Appalachian Trail, and we're gonna do 100 miles in four days to use that as a case study for the 100 mile challenge. So we had purchased three plane tickets. Uh, a big part of this was to like I say, go out there and see what Trail Days was like, see if that's something that we wanted to attend. So we had myself, Tyler, who heads up operations and has uh, does a lot with any kind of trade shows we might do. And then Brigham, our product designer, who obviously was coming out there to see Trail Days, but also to develop empathy for product designing. We booked flights for the Appalachian Trail for Trail Days and everything. And uh, it just happened that the dates for the Appalachian Trail we're stacking right on top of the dates for our Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim trip. So uh, Taysen, Brigham and I were a little nervous to do the, the 49 miles in the Grand Canyon, finish that on a Tuesday, then we'd have two or three days of rest and then fly out to uh, North Carolina and Virginia for trail days that Friday. During that hike, uh, Brigham hurt his knee pretty substantially and essentially as we were flying out there it became pretty apparent to me that he was not going to be doing this hike with us and so I was sure glad that at that point we had brought three of us on this trip so that I wasn't doing the 100 miles uh, solo. After the AT we built that thing we've been traveling full time since and over the top and the AT changed my life forever. I'm a systems engineer in IT. I'm a visitor practitioner we can't just quit and just walk away. Trail Days is a really fun event that happens on the AT every year in uh, early May. It's put on by the city of Damascus, Virginia. And uh, I think they call themselves Trail Town USA. They just really embrace the, the Appalachian Trail hikers. People were just very happy to be there. Uh, vendors were awesome, talked to a lot of vendors, had a lot of people come talk to us. It was really fun to do the interacting there and and just be approached and and, um, and that was that was cool. It's always fun to interact with, with our customers face to face. Billy Goat, I got Darwin, the hawk. There's other famous people in there too. But if you wanna, you can squeeze into the famous area where you can see. One of the most interesting parts of Trail Days is the parade. Uh, it's, it's where they have all of the hikers line up on one end of town. It's a really small town. And all of the spectators of Trail Days line up along the main drag with squirt guns. It was really like, towards the end, I thought it was really cool. They had, you know, things divided into like classes. So like if you hiked it in 1999, you would walk down this hiker's parade with your year of 1999. It's a really cool way. I'm sure those people recognized each other kept relations with some of them, you know, et cetera. We're built on by coming to this event year over year. Uh, but it was also, I mean, there was there were people having a great time there, to say the least. We didn't actually get on the trail until two or three in the afternoon. And the goal was to do like at least um, 10 or 15 miles 
uh, with that partial day. So you can message my phone from your image, right? Yeah. So it'll go in my email? Definitely. Checking the rest of my pack. What? Now. I ain't packing these for you, Tyler. What else did you sneak in my pack? I'm not telling. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, peace out, Brigham. Here we go. Our trail is uh, right here in the middle of town. So we're gonna hit the watches on and go kick off, click off 100 miles. Today. Today. <laughs> so we just hopped on trail right there from Damascus and just started humping it right up these hills. We're about a mile and a half in from Damascus and we're getting rained on. We've done a decent amount of climbing and the rain skirt has been unleashed. <laughs> I used to live out in North Carolina, so I was used to the humidity, but it's tricky to know when to put your rain jacket on when it feels so humid. You know you're getting rained on, but you don't necessarily want a jacket. So that's been the main question so far. Steep little hill after hill, we we're getting rained on. We couldn't see where we we're going because yeah. We're Western hikers that are used to being able to see the tops of hills and, and the hills behind you, but we were just going through this rainforest area and couldn't see anything. There we go. That reminds me of Asia. One big misconception that I had for a long, long time was that, you know, the CDT or the PCT had way more elevation gain than the AT but the AT actually has more elevation gain and loss than either of those, which really shocked me when I found that out. So um, yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to, to go and do this trail and uh, see what elevation climbing and descending is like out here, test some gear and, and just check out the sights and what there is to see over here. A bright little day. We're gonna go with these, call these adult fruit snacks. These are the uh, Honey Stinger Energy Chews. Living right. It was pretty interesting because as we were climbing up and out of the city, you can just hear all of the music and noise down below you, and you could hear it for miles. And in fact, we hiked 10 miles that day and did like 2,800 feet of elevation. And so I thought we were like, well, you know, a long ways from the city. I could hear either Damascus City or some other group or party, you know, partying all night long, even 10 miles down the trail. All right, <clears throat> there's Tyler's setup over there. You cooked my dinner yet? There's my setup over here. We are just about to start dinner. That guy is way too close to my stuff and way too big. Just made it into camp. Uh, quickly got our shelter set up as it's getting a little bit dark now. But uh, almost 11 miles today, so good start to the journey. It'll be interesting to see how well I'm able to adapt to hydration out here. I was kind of surprised because I think I underhydrated so far today, uh, but with all the humidity and whatnot, I think that maybe it's a little bit easier to do. So we'll see if we can dial that in tomorrow and um, make sure you feel good all day long and crank out a bunch of miles. So for right now, it is time for some peak refuel and uh, a little bit of resting. How your legs feeling? Um, decent. Did you wake up at 6.30 and start putting stuff away or did you just kind of lay there? Because you couldn't hear me. I just kind of laid there. Well, we are starting off day two right now. We uh, logged 11 miles yesterday. We'll see what we can manage today. We're definitely hoping to break 25. Hopefully a little bit more than that in order to stay on pace and on schedule to knock this out. So we're doing 100 miles. Trying to get it done in three full days on trail and two half days. Um, it'll actually end up being less than four days by the time that we really need to be at the car and headed back towards the airport. So it'll be interesting. First time I've had a dream within a dream. And the first dream was about my family being attacked by a bear in a little cabin. I woke up and was shooken from that. And then all of a sudden my tent was being attacked by a bear. And uh, I don't ever have bear dreams. I don't really have bear fears, but Taysen was talking about dreaming about bears yesterday, so I'm gonna blame it on him. But yeah, I woke up with my tent being attacked by a bear and that really freaked me out. 
Then I woke up again and uh, there was a squirrel under my vestibule. We were hiking towards a destination, you know, from the beginning that I think was fun because we knew we were gonna get there today, which is Grayson Highlands. So start off the morning, uh, it was really pretty, drop down and, and hit into the, the creeper trail and started to hike with a gentleman by the name of Boone. He decided to hike with us at, at our pace and it was, it was awesome to get to know him. He was a general contractor who had added about 400 miles from his state to the AT and then up. So he was doing an extra long through hike and uh, he was really fun to get to talk to, uh, to be able to like hear about his adventures on his hike and, and to kind of like see how much he had sacrificed to be able to get onto the trail. Cause essentially as a general contractor, if you're not out selling jobs and, and bidding things and keeping other people working, you don't have any income. And his, his business basically stopped for him to go out and do the trail. Yeah, this is yeah. high. They got way high. <laughs> Railroad bridge from the Virginia Creeper. He's a good sized millipede. Yeah. Think it'd bite your booty? I don't think I want to know. Oh, that was crazy. Look at that. A vine just broke and fell all the way to the ground from the top of that tree. Like a big old vine. I heard it. Hey, look. There's an outhouse right there. Whoa. That's sweet. You just crawl up in there and sleep, huh? Lost Mountain Shelter, 1995. We are definitely moving down the trail as fast as we can to uh, cover the mileage today. We've got quite a bit of elevation to climb, so it's been good. We've been working it, but the trails are nice because you're not going like straight up anything usually. Yeah. But, uh, still elevation. Got quite a few miles into the day before we got up to what kind of felt like your first glimpse of something like Grayson Highlands, which was a place called Buzzard Rock. And so we stopped there for lunch. Um, it was beautiful. It's like you, you were able to get out of the trees a little bit above the trees and see a long ways in a lot of directions. All right, Tayson, direction test. Oh. Which way? Sun's straight ahead. Which way is that way? Uh, it's gonna be southwest. Southwest? That's my guess. <clears throat> I think it's more west than south. But now you have to pull out your phone to see because we need a checker. It's uh, when you're in the green tunnel for 20 miles, it's hard to know exactly what direction you're facing. So we're at Buzzard Rock, 5,000 feet. That's pretty buzzard. And the trail goes pretty much west, so you're you're more right. That's more west than southwest. We just had a a really nice lunch there. I feel like I, we were, we weren't even there that long, maybe 20, 30 minutes maximum. And uh, it was enough for me, I feel like, to get a sunburn on my leg just because we were in such direct sunlight. But I didn't even care. It was just so pretty to, to sit out there and uh, dry out for a minute just from, from hiking and, and the high humidity. 10 of the 25 miles are done. We've climbed a lot of elevation. I think we've probably taken on half the day's elevation at least, so that's good. It's a good lunch. I had a Honey Stinger cracker bar and a few other goodies, some freeze-dried brownie bites peak refuel. What'd you have, Tyler? Let's see, I had a couple of pulled pork packets and honey stinger waffle and some almond butter and a uh, little fruit bar thing. So <laughs> it was quite a bit, but it good. Variety is the spice of life. <laughs> yeah. After the Grand Canyon, I didn't have quite as much knee injury as Brigham. You know, I'm fine on flat ground. I can go up hills fine, but prolonged downhill or bigger steps downhills really are hurting my knees. Coming down the north rim of the Grand Canyon, it was so bad that if we had to slow down to that pace, it would become really difficult for us to finish the 100 miles in our time requirements and catch our plane. So hopefully, cross our fingers, we can manage that and uh, keep this knee healthy for this trip go back and do some rehab on it at home. The middle section of the day was 
kind of up on top of a ridge and, and traversing from one ridge to another and taking us into Grayson Highlands. Yeah, I clicked off, just kept clicking off miles and it was, it was really pretty. I remember hiking through different sections of trail that were kind of um, overcast, but they weren't like green tunnel, meaning like, like you had trees to shade you and it was really pretty, but you weren't just inside a green tunnel. And um, just remember really enjoying that day. All right, so it's just about four o'clock and we're right around mile 17. We're climbing a mountain, headed to Grayson Highlands. And the trail is kind of rough. All right, we're just about to cross mile 20. We are up here in Grayson Highlands and it is gorgeous. It's just this really interesting area where it's like kind of above tree line. Like it's not really so high that trees can't grow there, but for whatever reason, there's less trees growing there. And there's like these really cool big rocks or boulders that jut out of the ground. And Taysen and I decided that that'd be a really good time for dinner because we could we could get recharged, get more calories, and then and then do another five or six miles after dinner. So we uh, we found like the biggest, coolest looking rock in all of Grayson Highlands and decided, okay, we're gonna hike up that and have dinner up on top there. So we noticed that there was like other people up there, but we didn't know what they were doing until we got like right up on top of them. And we realized that, there, that they were having a church sermon up there on, on top of the rock. And uh, then we kind of remembered, oh yeah, it's, it's Sunday today. And we were not wanting to crash their party, but we were also wanting to have our dinner in a cool spot. So we kind of went off the side and set up on this awesome little ledge. And we were able to eat our dinner and take our photos and, and get a little bit of gospel at the same time. So it was nice. Beautiful ponies down there. This was really awesome after having a very, I wouldn't say stressful day, but we were pushing pretty hard and not taking much for breaks. So we took a little extra time for dinner and a view and it was totally awesome. So one of my favorite parts about doing higher mileage days is that you typically stop for dinner at like five or six at night and then you continue hiking until it's close to getting dark and then you stop and set up your shelter. But what I found is I love hiking at this hour. It's the most pretty time of the day, in my opinion. It is also when most of the wildlife starts to come out and feed. And uh, yeah, it's just really become one of my favorite things of hiking is just to be continue moving at this time of day instead of sitting in camp and depending on where you're camped at, maybe not being able to see a whole lot. So really enjoy that. Hey little ponies. You guys just hanging out on the trail. I kept thinking like, ah, oh, there's no, no horseback travel allowed on the AT. Why is there so much dang horse poop? For those who aren't familiar with Appalachian Trail, there's a shelter every 12 miles, I think. And uh, they're like these little, three-sided log cabins that are built um, for hikers to get out of the rain in and, and to have a place to camp. But what happens is um, a lot of through hikers will, will hike from shelter to shelter and they'll camp in groups. And they won't necessarily sleep in the shelter because you can probably only fit eight to 10 people in a shelter if you're really cramming. But I think people just like to camp in groups so that they can be a little bit social, but also um, be able to just kind of have like that safety and numbers and that comfort. I think me and Tyler are quite uh, confused by that, I guess you could say, because for us, typically we're trying to get away from people when we're out backpacking instead of, you know, around people. So we ended up going uh, three or four miles past that shelter and getting to camp like right around dusk. Where Tyler's sleeping tonight. Did you ever read uh, Frightful's Mountain or whatever that's called? Hatchet? Well, I think it was by the same guy as Hatchet, but it was like the boy who lived in the hollow tree and he yeah. had a that's Hatchet. He had a falcon. No, 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 no. 
Yeah, I, the dark side of the mountain. Yeah, the dark side of the mountain, and then Frightful's Mountain, and then there was one other. Yeah, I love those ones. Yep, that's what that reminded me of. <laughs> we clicked off mile 25, like, exactly when it started getting dark and it started raining. So we scrambled to get the tents up. Now we're just kind of having some downtime. Super nice to get the shoes off and uh, I think we'll we'll wait a minute and uh, then we'll go do a bear hang and, and call it a day. Good day, I think it's gonna be a rainy night. We'll probably pull weather here on the Garmin uh, inReach and see what we're dealing with, but uh, I'm glad to be in here instead of out there right now. That was my tent spot. We are loaded up and ready to hit the trail. I don't know about you, Tyler, but uh, I slept really well. I wish I had more hours of it, for sure. At the start of day three, we were starting right around 36 or 37 miles in. Started out cold and foggy and kind of wet. So today is gonna be the rain day, according to the forecasts. Today we're probably the most likely to get into the rain and have to deal with that, so wish us luck. We heard some pretty solid thunder last night, so hopefully we don't get into that type of situation, but definitely expecting to get a little wet throughout the day. We got up the trail a little ways, crossed paths with the guy, and I just started to pick up a conversation with him. His trail name was Sorelton, really nice doctor out of Canada. He was also one that, there's, there's all sorts of gear types, I would say, on trail. He was one that was pretty conscious about his gear, and so it was really fun to talk more in depth with him about gear, whereas you know some of the other people on trail, it w just wasn't a big factor, and, and it almost seemed like there's a progression. So where we got on trail, we crossed the 500 mile mark, and so I think at this point, there was a lot of people that just got out there with whatever they had, and then the farther they went along, the more dialed in they got. After we split up with Sir Elton, we got to a point where we could have breakfast and see our last view of Cameron Highlands, um, that was kind of a bittersweet breakfast, I would say, where it was like, we're trying to get the miles done, but at the same time, just absolutely beautiful to look back at Cameron Highlands. We've done this big, massive circle, honestly. That was also part of it. You're like, man, if we'd gone straight, would have cut off a lot of miles here. Uh, and that was a theme I think we learned through the rest of this day and the next was that uh, the Appalachian Trail is in no hurry to get from point A to point B. It's about the journey, not getting to the destination. And uh, that trail does a whole lot of journeying. All right, so we've crossed the 10 mile mark for the day. We just did a pretty good climb and are coming down the other side and my knees felt really good. But once the trail gets a certain steepness, the knee just starts really flaring up. It's a little frustrating because typically you climb and you just look forward to the downhills. But now it's like the climb is a bit of a grind and then the downhill is even more of a grind. So a little bit of a different trip here. Mile 12, rain jacket testing. Yes. Out here in the dark woods, we can see out of them for half a second. Now, rain skirt. It's rain skirt time. Cartoon model on trail. Bring the rain. All right, happy 50th mile. We've officially passed the halfway point. Whoa. We were getting pummeled so hard with the rain that none of our device, devices devices could work could film. <laughs> so we're tired and wet. We're like an hour past when we thought we could push the lunch stuff. So now it feels like we're two hours past. Kept pushing till probably close to two in the afternoon, and then you know the storm broke, the sun was out, and we happened to be crossing where a highway crossed, and so we. There was kind of a section with some grassy area. So we sat down there and started to eat our lunch. Raccoon Branch Wilderness. So we have got about 16 miles down. We're gonna try to push and go past 25. I keep saying 27. That's my lucky number. Tyler's saying it's not a good number. <laughs> but, the rain just uh, slowed us down. The rain slowed us down. It also dampened our spirits, but some food and some sunshine I think has brought it back. Since neither of us are through hikers, we hadn't really like gone into um, much deep thinking about trail names or had anyone like really bestow an amazing trail name upon us. 
but Taysen's unofficial trail name has always been Wizard. We would call him like Water Wizard or Wizard or Gandalf. And so when people would ask uh, what his trail name was when we were out there on the AT, he would say Gandalf. We hiked into, I think, the next shelter and a lady, you know, comes right up to us and approaches us and says, um, I'm looking for my friend Gandalf, you know, do you know him? And Taysen was like, um, I don't think so, because he obviously didn't know her. And, and uh, so that was interesting. And then we went like a little further and someone else was like, Gandalf's supposed to be here. Like, like why, uh, where's, do you, have you guys seen Gandalf? And, and we're like, man, what's the deal with this Gandalf guy? And I had a moment out there where I realized by the way that this lady was acting, by the way she approached me, and by the popularity of this guy named Gandalf on trail, that uh, Gandalf was far more popular than I was and that clearly there was a reason for that popularity. And so after that, I graciously went by the trail name of Wizard, not to be misconstrued as Gandalf and uh, um, get get misapproached by people, I guess you could say. But uh, yeah, Gandalf was very popular. He had a lot of friends, a lot of friends on trail. All right, so we're like at mile 21 on day three. And uh, we found a rare meadow. I'd say one of the funnier um, parts of the trail was meeting uh, our friend Turtle on trail. At one point we were walking through this really pretty meadow and I said, Tyler, let's, let's get a walk by shot here. And so we put the camera up on a little fence post and we walk by it and we turn around and we walk backwards. And so now we're walking backwards down the trail to get this shot. And Turtle comes walking up and over the hill is we're like two guys power hiking straight at Turtle in our Outdoor Vitals gear, right? So we got like the same color shirt on, altitude shirt and the same backpack. And we're like power marching right back at him now. And you know, we'd been walking the other direction and, and he like visibly like kind of like jolted and stopped. And uh, anyways, we turn around, go back, get the camera, keep hiking. And, and I just thought it was, I thought it was kind of funny, but also it can be sometimes awkward when you're filming. So like you're feeling a little bit awkward, like he probably was wondering what the heck we're doing, you know? And uh, we get up to this next water source and decide to stop for water and he comes walking in and stops. And so we start talking to him and I just said to him, I said, you know, after we learned what his name was, and stuff, I said, what, what, what did you think when you saw us walking backwards towards you? He's like, honestly, I was freaked the heck out. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I wasn't sure if you guys were some kind of like trail missionaries or what was going on. So. Anyways, it, it made me laugh so hard that after that we introduced ourselves as, as trail missionaries uh, just because our outfits were so similar. He hiked with us for the rest of the day and uh, we talked about all sorts of things. We talked about how he had read a book about, about the Appalachian Trail and just decided that that was going to be his, like, his big rite of passage. He actually went into doing the Appalachian Trail never having done a full week of backpacking before. Just had his, his inReach and his podcasts and he was just going for it. And it was really fun to get to know him. We walked maybe another mile, stopped for dinner, and you know, I pull out my freeze dried homemade meal, you know, that I'd made with our harvest ride. And I'm eating that and Tyler's eating a peak refill meal. And we look over at Turtle and we're like, aren't you gonna eat? And he's like, uh, no, I, I'll, I, I'm just gonna have this. And I look over to see what he's pointing at pops a Jolly Rancher in his mouth. And I'm like, is that, is that your dinner tonight? And it's like, yeah, I'm not, I'm just not really hungry. You know, and it's like, dude, take some food or like trying or try to give him food. Um, Cause it felt like he didn't have food to eat or something, but no, I mean, that guy literally lived off of Jolly Ranchers and uh, built bars that someone had sent him. So we would get asked a lot on trail how we were able to do as many miles as we were doing. It seemed like the norm for the through hikers was 10 to 15 miles a day, and we were doing 25 plus every day. And there's a few things that we were doing that enabled us to do that. All right, there we go. Hit 27 miles on the day. We are coming from a lot higher elevation. So we were um, very well prepared cardiovascularly. We had also just done the Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim where we had a pretty good training program that we were following. But then the other thing was we packed enough food to do 
20 to 25 or 30 miles a day. We were packing like 4,000 calories per day. Just the difference in what we were doing being more of a sprint versus um, when you're actually through hiking, it's a marathon. You know, I'm, we're spoiled here, right? Like we've got a, a Harvest Stripe freeze dryer that's amazing. We've got tons of backpacking food that we sell within our Live Ultra Light membership. Um, but sometimes it'd probably be worthwhile for me to go back and just walk into a small grocery store and have to buy, you know, four days worth of food and figure out what that would be like because it, it definitely had us scratching our heads of how can you guys stay like nutritiously balanced on trail on a budget in a small scale store. All right, so we've got our camp all set up here. We ended up doing right around 27 and a quarter miles and uh, it was a long, wet, wet, humid day, but uh, we made it to camp before dark. Our tents are set up before dark. <laughs> Our bear hang might be done before dark, so. We got a lot to celebrate. Yeah, we, we got more miles today and we're at camp earlier, so we're pumped. Over here, Turtle. We had a really good time with him. We just had to tell him like, hey, don't take any offense if we leave at 6 a.m. and you're like not ready to hike with us in the morning. He's like, there's no chance I'll be ready to hike with you. Just have a good time. And so we said our goodbyes that okay. night and then we were gone pretty early in the morning. All right, we're just leaving camp. It's 6.50 in the morning and we are on to crush the next, uh, what, 27 miles? Yeah. <laughs> Pressure's off a little bit because we're in the home stretch. We're in the home stretch. It feels, at least it feels a little bit like that, so. It especially feels like that because my pack probably only weighs like 12 pounds right now. My knee actually felt its best yet getting out of the tent today, but within about 100 yards, it was already noticeably painful. I got some uh, stiffness in my knee. I was actually kind of like, just sitting in my tent stretching and I felt a little bit of a pop and then since then it's hurt a little bit but I'm hoping once we warm up that will go away. Day four was wild. The longest, hardest day of the trip. We're having a little breakfast stop. Taysen's having first breakfast. I'll probably have second breakfast and uh, we got water. This was probably the longest we went without water. Got Just... a little too comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> you hit the trail, you feel more fresh, things are going good. We met into, we met a lot of people actually that knew us, stopped us, talked to us, and so that's always nice. Early on, we, we started hiking with uh, Sir Elton and uh, his friend from Germany. We are talking about the miles that, that uh, had to be done for his visa. And we came up on this shelter that looked like a mansion. Yeah, this thing is about as quite the shelter. This is the one that you take the undersecretary to to see. <laughs> Look, this one even has a extra, so it's got a shower. Oh, yeah, this one has a shower with no. Oh my golly! I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't look like it functions right now. What is going on? with these East Coast hikers. Like you do not see shelters in the West and you definitely don't come up on anything um, on a trail that has a shower. And so we were like, this is, this is like some pretty soft hiking. And so then we like walk like another hundred yards and then we realize there's a visitor center for that area in the forest there. And we're like, oh, no wonder they can make such a nice shelter. It's right next to a visitor center, which is on a highway. And it's like, okay, this isn't as crazy as we thought. Andy from Michigan, Hi, also Al. known as Chip. We're, We're talking, talking about how people survive eating what they eat out here. Yeah, I could not live off of gummy worms and peanut butter on a tortilla. <laughs> is, this, is the gummy worms like, that is the jelly, I guess. It's just easier to haul gummy worms than jelly. It sense. won't explode in your food bag like my gel did. I'm, I'm half in mind to try that now that I... Now you got the logic? Now I link the logic together. We, uh, we can actually see out of the trees for a second. Look at that. Ooh. Enjoy your stay here. 
at our 1984 Linda Mood schoolhouse. How about that? Oh, look at this. That's some pretty... We got, got food for you. Yeah, that's some pretty awesome Reading trail mix. magic. Look at all that they've got. We've got like first aid kits, all sorts of soap and goodies. Crossword puzzles. And then wow. desks to learn. Trail volunteers are angels who perform trail magic. Please give back, be a volunteer. A lot of the church groups really take on the hikers. It's in, uh, I think it was Hiawassee, they had this whole pancake breakfast brought you into the, you know, the church. Pancake sounds pretty good right now. It was. <laughs> <laughs> we hike with these guys for a while and cross a, uh, a road and and those guys jumped off trail to, to run into town. And I think that's part of why some of these guys, they were actually hiking probably pretty good mileage, but while they were like maybe behind the curve of like a 20 mile day is just the amount of time that they had spent off trail. And almost everyone that we had spoken to at this point had come off trail for some kind of injury or illness. We talked to one guy, I was gonna do the PCT. I took six months off work. I geared up for it for years. And in the first week he had an injury, an old injury flare up and he got off trail. It's like that. It feels like if you had done more prep work, yeah. you know, that would have come up in training. Turtle had been in the hospital for, for being sick. I think our German friend, he'd come off trail for a week or two. And that seemed to be just a really reoccurring common theme is that people, um, you know, had come off trail for some kind of injury. And, and so I think, <laughs> I think that's also a big part of why we, we preach just training a lot. Uh, is to avoid, you know, stepping on trail and just not being ready and then having to have one or two weeks of downtime while you're trying to get back on trail. We just split off from hiking with Chip. We had really good company today, which has been good because some of the trail was a little monotonous and it's always nice to be able to tell stories. See, the thing is, this guy right here has seen and heard all of the stories I have to tell. And I've heard all of the stories he has to tell multiple times, but sometimes I don't tell him that. And uh, so sometimes you hike with someone new, you get their stories, they ask you your stories, and I feel like the last couple hours went a lot quicker than they would have otherwise. So it's been really cool. I feel like you're not know, here on the AT, the social aspect of it is just a big aspect of it. And uh, I've been enjoying it. The antidote for the three, ooh, <laughs> for the three o'clock slope. Which is? 200 milligrams of caffeine. <laughs> A pink cup of coffee. It's the uh, Mountain Ops Ignite. <laughs> Available to you at the Outer Vitals membership. Looks like a butterfly. It's a sneaky... It is, it's a giant moth. No way. Yeah. It's a squished giant moth. So that's a moth. Whoa. That's pretty. He's got a little hair on his back, doesn't he? Well, that was... That was a sneaky leaf moth. Moth leaf. Dinner time. Day four. Pretty sure it's bedtime, but we're 22 miles in. We're uh, fixing our feet and cooking at the same time. Don't Super question organic. our. Don't question our um, hygiene. <laughs> we're creeping up on mile 26, and it is my favorite time to be on trail. It's absolutely gorgeous out here. The only con has been the spider webs across the trail. Everyone uh, stops for camp a lot earlier than we do out here. And uh, <clears throat> man, spiders get really busy really fast apparently. And uh, we, I'm gonna have to do an inspection on this beard tonight. <laughs> We've been using our trekking poles as spider web catchers. It looks a little bit like this. <laughs> Some people might think he's trying to get struck by lightning or water witching witch. witching for water, but no, he's just he's just trying to keep the spider webs off of his face. We hiked up this big mountain and then we got to this point where the mountain got really steep and dropped off. There was like no campsites like in view of where we were and we were like right around mile 26 at that point and uh, we we see this tiny camp spot and it was like barely big enough for one of our trek 
for a single person trekking full tent. I don't think we can fit both of us in one one person tent. The problem I think is that's all that would fit right here. Yeah, the problem is it's getting pretty late at night, but hopefully when I get to the bottom of this, I'm sure we'll be able to find something. Yeah, like, well, it doesn't look like there's gonna be camping on this steep mountain, so we gotta go at least two more miles, and we're like, well. It's still light, we should do two more miles so that we can get ahead of things and not have as big of a day on our last day, which was going to be a partial day. We started hiking, went a little bit farther, and then um, got onto some private land. There's a sign that says, private property, next 10 miles, no camping without written permission. And we're like, 10 miles? So now we've got, a, not only did we wanted to hike like two more miles, right, and call it a day. Okay, so do we hike? like three miles back up the hill to that one, and then still have 15 miles to do tomorrow? Or do we just keep going and see if we can like camp on a road? Pretty soon we got up to the road and we're like, okay, let's just camp on the road. Like the road's gotta be public. And we walk over to where we could camp and uh, we sit down we're like, okay, let's camp right here. And I look up and I see a sign that says no camping. <laughs> like, no way. We knew there was a hostel, like, just up the road from from where the trail crossed, and so we were like, well, let's, uh, let's have that AT experience, and let's try to go get a night at the hostel since there was no camping allowed. So we walk up to the hostel. It's completely shut down, right? Because it's, like, it's probably 11 o'clock at night or something. And there's, like, shoe racks by the door, and it's completely full with shoes. And then we, like... Like the screen door was like open, but we look in and there's just like sleeping people everywhere. And we're like, ah, this is probably not gonna work. Well, what do we do now? So we walk back down. We're like at this little park area um, with a pavilion and we're like, oh, let's camp here. And then like, as soon as we sit down at the picnic table, we see the signs that say no camping. So then we're like, okay, I guess we'll keep going. We're like, okay, let's just barely start up the trail and then pitch our tents. And we had like pretty heavily considered like how much trouble would we get in if we camped here and just like begged for forgiveness um, in the morning, letting people know we were delirious at night and we'd gone 30 miles. And, and we decided not to push those limits. And we walk and I'm like, oh, I think I could pitch my tent right here. And I think I took my backpack off and Tyler had walked like 10 more feet and he's like, Taysen, there's tents all over right here. And we like start to like unpack and Taysen's like, we gotta go further. This is too loud and everyone's sleeping. I just, I can't do this, man. I can't, like my pad is so noisy. My tent is so noisy. The zippers are so noisy. Like I cannot come into someone else's camp at 11 o'clock at night and pitch my tent 10 feet from their tent, you know? I was like, no way. I'm sleeping right here. Like my tent is out and unrolled and Taysen's like, no, we gotta go further. And I was like, you jerk. And he was being the nice person and I was being the jerk, but I thought he was being a jerk. And so I pack up my stuff and then the trail goes straight up this stupid mountain. We continue on, even though in retrospect, like they probably wouldn't have cared at all, man. Like that's just common out there. They're, everyone else was camping right on top of each other. Why, why did it matter? But to me it mattered. So we go and we climb like, Another section of trails like 500 feet up and we're looking the whole time on the map. We're wishing we had downloaded far out the last time we were in town. We like see this little knob on a, like in the middle of a ridge and there's a saddle and we're like, if we can just make it to there, we can probably camp. Like it looks like the topo lines are far enough apart that it's not like st going straight down. And so we get to the first one, nowhere to camp. Like we get to the next saddle, nowhere to camp. And uh, then we pass a shelter and it was like a legit shelter and there's just people everywhere camped there. So we have to like walk past the shelter and then we finally find this, this little tiny knob in this really steep little ridge. Just a couple of uh, millipede, centipede, whatever peds next to my tent. Pitch my tent in there and I grab my stuff before I get in my tent to go hang it up for a bear hang. And I walk up and, and I think I grabbed Tyler's food on the way, I walk up and over the hill. I go to walk off the back side of the hill and I look down and I just see these two big eyes just staring at me. I got eyes over here and I'm like, cool, what is it? And he's like, 
I don't know, but it's not scared of us. I think they can kind of make our body. I think it's a deer. Dude, you didn't even blink. What the fuck? All right, let's do some math. That's what, 50 yards? How is that wide? Has to be a decent sized animal. It's got to be a pretty decent sized animal. It's either got to be a deer or a bear, right? Hey, bear. Why would a deer not run away? There's no way it can be a deer with eyes that close together. Could still be a bear. Yeah. Or a cougar. Why a cougar? Because it has close together eyes. Do they? If we got a little closer, could we tell? How deer and hoofed animals have eyes kind of on the side of their head, so they have huge peripheral. Right. And then you think of a predator, how they have eyes forward. The way this animal is not skittish like a deer, and the way you can see both eyes so clearly makes it not feel like it's a deer. How can this be our luck at midnight? Well. Can you sleep with a bear 50 yards from your tent? And I was kind of thinking about it. I was like, well, probably, but if there's an issue with a bear, I'm not going to have the energy to handle it if we go to sleep right now. And and Taysen kind of said something to the same effect. And so we're like, all right, we're moving our stupid camp. Tyler grabs his tent just in his arms like this and just shoves it in his backpack as is with this quilt and sleeping pad like in there. I grab my tent, throw it in my bag, and we hike some more. All right, so we ended up going another mile and a half, actually past a shelter, walked through another camp of sleeping people as quietly as we could, and uh, found some tiny little nooks to stuff our tents. Talk about one of the biggest circuses I've ever had at night and finding a tent or campsite 34 miles before we finally got a spot. If there was something waiting at the end of the 100 miles for us, I would finish tonight, no no questions. But uh, there's not right now, not at least <laughs> until tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock when Brigham will pick us up. So it's time to blow up the pad and call it a night. One of those really miserable nights where you're just pushed to your limits by multiple different things and uh, we both woke up thinking like that was for sure a deer. Like we we're we were totally delirious and that was really dumb that we moved again and man, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's morning. I snoozed the alarm more times than I remember. Pretty sure people have been walking by our tent, can't even hear them. All we can hear is this crazy noisy bird about an hour ago that had to have been right on top of us and was like pounding its head against a log and screeching. We still got about three miles left to do the 100 miles, which is ridiculous because we were planning on having like 10 left, but last night just got so crazy. We told Bergen we'd be there at 10, and that's about two hours from right now. We were trying to figure out exactly how much mileage we needed to do. So we ended up, what we ended up needed, having to do because the next drop off point that we were thinking we could get picked up at, Brigham had texted us and said, no, it's not a viable pickup spot. So we ended up hiking like a half mile or a mile down the trail, turning around and then hiking all the way back to where we had thought about camping the night before, where there was the parking lot and the hostel and whatnot. All right, guys, there we've got it. 101 miles on the AT, wrapping up. I can see Brigham, or at least the car. Any finishing thoughts, Tyler? What was it like? Pretty awesome to see. It's like, it's so much better to go and experience it and, and get a real idea for things than just think about it. So it's been really fun to hike in this corner of the world and be able to um, just kind of add that to our list of experiences. And look who it is. He's alive. It was awesome. 
it was kind of a grind just because of the time window that we had, but going to lower elevation or some of the training we've done really paid off and we could really charge through the hills. But overall, the, the highlights I think were the people out here. Meeting, walking, hiking with, with you guys out here. Um, I can see how social the AT is and how fun that is. It's a really cool system that you guys have out here and um, super glad we came and did it. Um, super glad we got to meet a lot of you guys and just experience uh, 100 miles of it. It's far from the 2,000 plus miles that the trail is and I'm sure we'll be back to section hike um, other parts of it at different times, but I uh, really enjoyed the time out here. Now it's time to go get a shower and maybe get a little food and then head for the airplane. So thanks for joining us. We'll, uh, we'll see you guys on the next adventure.